Vostok spacecraft is an icon. It is literally the world's first spaceship. If this flight had not been an absolute and total success, Yuri Gagarin would not have been the first man in space. The capsule we're selling is called Vostok 3KA2. That was the official name of the mission and the official name of this spaceship. It was the last unmanned test made before Yuri Gagarin was sent into space. And it came at the very end of about a two-year period of testing to see if the Russians felt that they could put a man into space. The spacecraft is identical to Gagarin's. Went up into space only uh, two and a half weeks before Gagarin. It was a successful flight and it allowed Gagarin's flight to go forward. Vostok 3KA2 carried a cosmonaut mannequin dressed in a full space suit. He ejected and came down on his parachute just like Gagarin would eventually. It did contain a dog called Little Star, Svezdocha is her Russian name. She landed fine, the capsule landed fine. When it was finally recovered, one of the engineers who was on the team described that uh, the capsule still hot from its uh, re-entry and sort of melting the snow around it as though it looked like some great animal that had collapsed and was breathing its last. The recovery was terribly important. I mean, the whole point of this was to send it up into space, see what it could do, and then have it come back, and then really look hard at the capsule and its contents to make sure that a human being could survive this, this, this kind of, of flight. It was attached to a helicopter, taken away for, for really intensive investigation afterwards. This capsule was obtained directly from Russia in 1996 uh, by an American collector. Uh, he has had it since. It's been on view around the country. Uh, we talked about when we might sell it, and we're coming up on the 50th anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's first flight in space, and we thought, now is the time to try it. The Vostok capsules are really quite unusual. Um, they're round. They're like great big cannonballs. And in fact, Sergei Korolev, the great designer of the Russian spacecraft, thought this is the perfect form for a spacecraft. And they learned pretty quickly that in fact other forms were better. And so this is the only series of spacecraft which are perfectly round. The capsule, I suppose, is about the size of a medium-sized luxury car on the interior. But it would have been crammed full of instrumentation. There would have been very, very little room. Can you imagine being essentially in a sardine can? Very, very claustrophobic. Uh, the capsule is just a tiny bit over seven feet, about 2.3 meters in diameter. But that includes the shell. Of course, the cosmonaut was wearing an elaborate spacesuit at the same time. And they would have been strapped into their seat. And they would have been really very, very limited in what they could do. It's made of an aluminum alloy. Uh, it's covered with an ablative material, which is uh, designed to sort of slowly burn off and re-entry uh, so that the entire capsule uh, doesn't burst into flame. Some people looked at it and said, our spacecraft seems to have an aesthetic character to it. And in fact, one of the oddities about displaying it in our lobby downstairs with a Rodin the kiss nearby is that people, first of all, look at it as a rather interesting work of art, and of course it is. I mean, the idea of this extraordinary spherical object with this wonderful patination on the outside caused by the interaction of the surface with the atmosphere is quite impressive and quite moving. Of course, then when you realize that in fact this is a spaceship, it's a whole other dimension, and a flash of recognition comes over you, and you realize you're looking at something truly exceptional. A physical artifact can really take you back in time in a way that a written record can't. To, you can hold in your hand a medal and think this was pinned to George Washington's coat. Uh, and here you can look at this object and, and realize it, it changed the course of history. Without this, we wouldn't have had a man in space. Uh, we wouldn't have had a man on the moon. This is a tangible reminder of a, a great period in history. What an extraordinary amount of pride one would get in having this in your institution. Um, what a thing to delight and amaze adults and children. This capsule was manufactured and launched into space less than 50 years 
after Orville and Wilbur Wright made the first powered flight of an airplane. And that flight lasted 12 seconds and went about 40 yards. So when you think of the advances that that represents for mankind in those 50 years, uh, it's really quite remarkable. Sotheby's is all about selling the most exciting things in the world, the greatest, the best things in the world, and this is one of them. That's what it's about.